Hey guys, it's Dr. JP, and today we are going to take a look at the running form of Justin Gatlin, who is one of the fastest sprinters in the world. There is definitely lots of controversy around him, but he has proven to have world-class sprinting mechanics. Now we already made a sprinting analysis on Usain Bolt, however his build and form is pretty unique and adapted to different factors such as his stature. It will be interesting to analyze Justin Gatlin's running form as he has a different body frame and see how that impacts the way he runs. Sprinters, especially those that are built to be more like Justin Gatlin or just want to learn more about running mechanics, may be able to learn how to tune their form to go even faster. Now let's get into the analysis. First, we will take a look at the start. The footage we will be taking a look at is when Justin Gatlin ran the 100 meter in 9.74 seconds in 2015. Ultimately, the speed during the start is based on how quick and hard you can take steps. I wish we can take a look at the force he produces as his foot hits the ground, but unfortunately, there are no force plates in the ground, so we can't measure that. So first, let's take a look at his step rate during the start. You can see that Gatlin takes quicker steps than the rest of the group, giving him an edge during this phase of the race. Now generating high amounts of force in a short duration is important, however if that force is not directed toward the desired direction, such as when sprinters deviate toward the side of the lanes when running, then you are losing out on speed. Therefore, the next thing we will look at is path deviation, which is basically seeing how well Gatlin is able to maintain a straight line without deviating to the sides. As you can see, he does maintain a relatively straight path when running, which allows him to optimize force directed forward. Now, we will take a look at the quality of his form as he takes his first steps off the blocks, and you can definitely see the unique differences of his form compared to when I analyzed Bolt. Unlike Usain Bolt, Justin Gatlin focuses on stabilizing the upper body to minimize energy leakage. His form is compact and focuses on taking quick steps, which is a different focus compared to Bolt. Now, would I say one approach is clearly superior than the other? Definitely not. These sprinters have adapted their sprinting mechanics based on the unique characteristics of their body and have further honed it through training. Next, we'll be moving on to looking at Justin Gatlin's running form as he comes out of the dry phase. Before we go into specific components of his running, we will first take a look at overall components of speed, which are stride frequency and stride length. We'll be basing this off of when he ran the 100 meter during the 2017 World Championships. First, we will look at stride frequency, which is basically the rate that someone takes steps. As he approached the mid part of the race, he presented with a step rate of about 280 steps per minute. As you know, this is very fast, and this cadence is seen with top elite sprinters. However, with this quick step rate, he also still manages to maintain a pretty large step length of 2.27 meters. This was actually the differentiating factor during this specific race. The only person who presented with a bigger step was Usain Bolt, which makes sense as he probably has the largest step length compared to the other elite sprinters. Anyway, let's take a closer look at specific aspects of Justin Gatlin's running form and see how his mechanics allow him to maintain both a quick stride frequency and large step length. The clip we will now be looking at is when he ran the 100 meter in 9.94 seconds. This is definitely not his best time, but this footage gives us the best view to really take a look at his running mechanics. As we always do, let's first take a look at the way his foot lands as it touches the ground. Similar to many elite sprinters, he lands on the forefoot. And you'll also notice that his heel never really touches the ground as he sprints during this phase. This decreases foot contact time, leading to a faster rate of steps. Now. What may impact his ability to take quick steps even more is actually where the foot lands in relation to the body center of mass. This isn't a completely accurate depiction as this isn't a perfect side view, however you can see that Justin Gatlin's foot lands very close to the body's estimated center of mass. Usually, the closer the foot lands to the center of mass, the faster the person is able to complete the running cycle, which leads to improved speed. Next, we will take a look at vertical oscillation, which is basically the amount of bounce Justin Gatlin has as he runs. Typically, in elite level sprinters, even when producing high amounts of force through the legs, they present with very little bounce when sprinting at full speed. This usually has to do with the high step rate during these speeds, as the higher the step rate is, the less vertical oscillation that is usually seen. With Gatlin, you can see this to be the case, but I'd say he stands out more in this aspect compared to other elite sprinters we have analyzed before, as you can barely see much of it going on. Theoretically, by minimizing vertical oscillation, this maximizes force directed forward, further increasing step length. Now let's take a closer look at the hips and see the peak movement of the hips as it goes through hip flexion, then into hip extension. I check these areas to see if there are any obvious deficits in hip movement. 
For Gatlin, he seems to have enough hit motion to maintain an optimal stride. Now instead, let's take a look at hip movement ranging from when the foot first touches the ground to when it pushes off. I take a look at this frame as this shows how Gatlin effectively uses his hip mobility. This could show whether an athlete is reaching too far forward or they are not pushing back enough with the hips prior to push off. Based on this frame, I can see that there is no excessive reaching forward which could lead to a braking effect which would hamper speed. Now taking a look at push off, he does present with decent enough hip extension prior to push off for sprinting. This is important as I found that some sprinters overemphasize step rate and don't extend the hips enough before pushing off the ground. This leads to decreased force reduction from the legs which may limit step length and could actually impact step rate as well as the decreased force could lead to a slightly slower swing. Now let's take a look at that arm swing, specifically shoulder movement as he runs. I place markers to see the range of this movement and as you can see, there is a lot of it. Typically with increased speed, runners tend to increase arm swing as well. One of the main purposes of arm swing is to counteract the high levels of angular force from the legs. With increased speed, increased force is produced in the legs, requiring more arm swing to counteract it. This helps the runner stabilize the force and maintain a relatively straight path during running. However, in Gatlin's case, he does present with a bit more shoulder movement compared to the other sprinters I've analyzed. One possible reason for this is because he stiffens up his trunk a whole lot during running. Usually, trunk rotation also aids in counteracting the angular force from the legs, but since there is little movement of the trunk seen, this is compensated by a bigger arm swing. Moving on, let's take a look at the head. You can see that he keeps it in a pretty neutral position as he runs. Now we will take a look at head movement during the 2017 World Championships so we can get a good view of the front of his body. Like I said earlier, Gatlin tends to stabilize the upper body, and you could really see that from the front of the body. He doesn't even present with much side to side movement of the head either. Anyway, while we're in this view, we can also take a look at both the arms and legs as he runs. He presents with pretty good symmetry from both sides of the body. I don't really see much differences when comparing the right and left side. Symmetry is important in running as it requires both sides of the body to work in unison. And that's it for the quick analysis on Justin Gatlin. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you shared it with your friends. Also, let me know what you thought about the video. I'd love to hear your feedback. And as always, thank you for watching.